so I want to say something about where my research is right now and the things that I have been researching most recently have not made it into my YouTube channels and so I want to say something about where I am and I, I would very much like to present uh, the stuff that I'm working on to share the stuff that I'm working on whereas a lot of the things that I've said on YouTube are just things that I've come up with over over the years the stuff that I'm, I've been working on and machinating on most recently has been um, has been neglected because of the the depth and the speed at which I've been moving through it and I just don't know where to start and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just put a little put a little uh, 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 pin into the map right now uh, of, of where I am uh, presently with with uh, my my uh, machinations I've been thinking a lot about time time lately and the nature of time and movement and the nature of light and dark and I just want to throw this out there and so here's here's where I am going to be uh, studying and I'll, hopefully I'll be able to work back and present some of the stuff that I've uh, that's led me to this point in the coming months okay so on the derivation of the actual structure of the universe <sighs> aligning the mathematical dualities that we perceive with the nature of space-time we can derive a sort of logical mapping a sort of ontological construction that would be implied if there is if there is a natural mathematical order to the structure of space-time and so this uh, natural order um, may be it may be possible to um, infer or uh, uh, inductively prove the existence of this order um, by aligning the proper dualistic metaphors to their um, apparent manifestation in our world and so when you consider the nature of our existence there are several things that immediately pop out as salient facts about the nature of the world one of the most salient facts about the nature of our perception is the duality between light and dark you have um, light which is uh, this sort of um, predicate predicatory um, indicator as to the presence of material objects as to the presence of solid versus um, uh, opaque or um, uh, uh, ethereal substance you have the you have the air the earth the fire and the water which all have different reactions to light and to the um, to the presence or absence of light and this duality is reflected in the sky itself and the there are four directions that um, we have uh, mo mobility in or you could you could call it two axes you could call it two axes that we have and then a third axis which we are immobile in one direction um, and seemingly immobile in the other direction we, we can we can go up and down only a very limited amount our primary mobility is along the what are uh, classically termed as the the X and the Y axis of a, of a, of a Cartesian plane and the the, the z-axis or y-axis depending on your your uh, notational convention um, is uh, inaccessible uh, to a degree in both directions and it seems that the very structure 
of our being, the very construction of our being reflects this sort of duality in its um, orientation or its uh, it, the difference in its orientation with respect to the other creatures that seem to dwell in the same in the same world as us it reflected in our very sky we have this duality between light and dark night and day that seems to have uh, this cycle of 24 hours where it becomes light and it becomes dark and the movement of the darkness and light is suspiciously similar to the constructs that we see in trigonometric mathematical analysis. We have the, the sine and the cosine in, in trigonometry that move in a similar way uh, as derivations of what we know as, as the circle. And so as there's this geometry of the circle that has uh, been studied since the time of Pythagoras and probably way before. We have developed the trigonometry to analyze natural systems and to uh, predict and uh, model natural and mechanical phenomenon. The light in the dark duality, if it was presented on one of these axes, if you consider the light in the dark as a sort of third axis on a trigonometric function, so say, if for, for example, take the sine wave, um, which represents the uh, x and y um, uh, coordinates, the Cartesian coordinates of the degrees of a circle. The Cartesian coordinate represents the distance between the point on the circle and its x dimension and its y dimension, if you're using that convention. If you consider the nature of, of light and dark with respect to this, it seems that there would be uh, a natural cycle that is is very very similar to the sine wave in that you could take the 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 point at the origin to be the dawn and the 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 sunset what you're in a sense measuring then is a sort of sweep of time a time wave that is um that is mapped to the axis of this natural mathematical function. And it may turn out that time and the progression of light are related in such a way that analyzing the function, analyzing the manifestation of light and time in this way will allow us to observe and model things about the nature of time, light, and dark, um, and the structure of the universe that we have not previously come to understand. This is one of the directions, this is one of the, the, the things that I want to be exploring over the next few months. I want to explore the nature of this relationship between time and what would be the natural uh, mathematical order of light and dark movement, light and dark uh, procession, uh, the cycle of, of natural light and dark progression that is observed with respect to the phenomenon of time.